Hello everyone, it's Dr. Helen Jaffer. I'm a periodontist and I'm about to continue on, on my series lectures uh, about the gingiva and I'll try to cover uh, all the subjects regarding the gingiva. We talked about uh, gingivitis, we talked about uh, different types of gingivitis, plug induced and uh, non plug induced then we talked about the bleeding as a specific character or clinical feature of gingiva and the main changes especially the color changes that happen in the gingiva uh, and we talked about the gingival enlargement in details and I am going in sequence throughout the lectures till we finish this chapter before I start, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel HL Talent to get more videos on these subjects. So today my subject will be about acute gingival infections. Acute gingival infections mainly composed of three categories. One of them is necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, primary herpetic gingival stomatitis, and pericoronitis. I'll go through the clinical feature of each of them and the management and the diagnosis. So, regarding necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, this is actually an endogenous oral infection characterized by necrosis of the gingiva. Here you see the necrosis of gingiva. Also called trench mouth. Trench mouth. Due to its prevalence in combat trenches. Other synonym for uh, the necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis is Vincent's infection. And fuso spirochetial gingivitis or acute ulcerative gingivitis. So uh, you have these names also to be used as a synonym for necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Tissue, dis tissue destruction here is caused by endogenous organism that act either on the tissue or indirectly by triggering an inflammatory reaction. So it's either direct or indirect mechanism of action. Regarding the etiology, the role of bacteria mostly caused by fusoform bacilli and spirochetes. In addition to it, bacteroids intermediates is also responsible for acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So we have three main categories of bacteria, fusof fusoform bacilli, spirochetes, also bacteroid intermediates. Uh, the local predisposing factors that are making the disease worse by the presence of these factors, including poor oral hygiene, pre-existing marginal gingivitis, and faulty dental restorations. Deep periodontal pocket offered favorable environment for the occurrence of that disease. So it is one of the risk factors, the presence of pocket. Area of gingiva is traumatized by opposing malocluded teeth. Sometimes, due to malocclusion, the opposing teeth uh, will cause traumatization of the gingiva, especially in cases of deep bites. Uh, as tobacco smoke has a direct toxic effect on the gingiva, smoking and emotional stress can predispose to acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Almost always we uh, warn our, pa our patients about uh, the smoking, alcohol consumption and uh, <clears throat> uh, the bad habits that act as an aggra aggravating factor for periodontal disease as general and stress Smoking and alcohol consumption are in the head of the list. 
Well, these are the local predisposing factors. Well, the systemic factors, including nutritional deficiency, for example, vitamin B12, B2, sorry, deficiency, vitamin C deficiency. Uh, these uh, kinds of deficiency may lead systematically to acute necrotizing gingivitis. And we have some debilitating disease that uh, will impress uh, or depress the immunity of the patient. Chronic diseases like leukemia, aplastic anemia, syphilis, severe gastrointestinal disturbance, and AIDS, they are also acting as a systemic predisposing factor. Uh, when there is a marked malnutrition, we talked about nutritional, nutritional deficiency. But when there is, the patient is markedly, for example, the Somalian patients have uh, the disease is more uh, popular there and in undeveloped countries because uh, of the malnutrition that present there. And psychosomatic factors, the disease often occurs in association association with the stress situation as well as with the increase in adrenocortical secretion. So these are the etiology. We repeat it. We have a role of bacteria, three kinds of bacteria. We have local predisposing factors, including poor oral hygiene, stress, smoking. And we have systemic uh, predisposing factors, including nutritional deficiency, debilitating disease like leukemia, plastic anemia, and we have marked malnutrition, and finally psychosomatic factors. The clinical feature here regarding the age, it's almost common, uh, uh, common in the age group of 16 to 30, 16, 1, 6 to 30 years of age but can be seen in children from a low socioeconomic group, as we said, marks when we have a marked malnutrition patient. Uh, the symptoms include uh, the onset is sudden with pain, tenderness, profuse salivation, and peculiar metallic taste, spontaneous bleeding from the gingival tissue will occur. And there is also a loss of sense of taste and diminished pleasure from smoking. The, the, the typical order uh, of the acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis is fetid order ultimately de developed. There is, there is a fermentational order inside the mouth which may be, may, may be extremely unpleasant. The signs, teeth seem highly to be extruded and are sensitive to pressure or have a woody sensation. They are slightly movable and the patient is unable to eat properly. The gingiva may become superficially stained with a brown color like you see in here, for example, here, okay. So, uh, there is a blunting of interdental papilla, as you see here. There is no sharp knife edge papilla. And uh, the appearance of the lesion, a typical lesion, consists of necrotic punched out crater like ulceration, most commonly on the marginal gingiva and interdental papilla. The removal of the lesion leaves a raw surface. The surface of gingival crater is covered by a grey pseudomembranous slough, as you see it here, for example. Demarcated from the remainder of the gingival mucosa by pronounced linear erythema, like here, you find it here. In some cases, ulceration may develop on cheek, lip, tongues, palate, and pharyngeal area. 
If untreated, it may result in progressive destruction of the periodontium and denudation of the root, <clears throat> accompanied by increase in the severity of complications. Like, for example, <clears throat> it affects the lymph nodes, causing uh, regional lymphadenopathy. The fever may, may occur. Uh, there may be a slight elevation of temperature. And in some cases, systemic complications, there may be a systemic complication like increased fever, high fever, increased pulse rate, and loss of appetite, and generalized lassitude. <coughs> Clinical classification of necrotizing gingivitis, we have stage 1, 2, 3, and 4. In the stage 1, only the superior margin of the interdental papilla are affected. And there is marked tendency of bleeding on probing. While in stage 2, the process spread to the marginal gingiva with characteristic punched out destruction. Stage 3, the attached gingiva is affected in addition to the interdental papilla and marginal gingiva. While in stage 4, the necrotizing process has resulted in denudation of the root, of the bone of the surrounding the roots. So, uh, finally, it will become, uh, when it affects the bone, it will become irreversible change. Clinical diagnosis, we have punched out ulceration of gingiva with systemic features that we talked about. This will give us a clue about the diagnosis. The management of necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis uh, includes removal of pseudomembrane because uh, the involved area are isolated with the cotton rolls and dried, then a topical anesthesia is applied and after two to three minutes, the area are gently swabbed with a cotton pellet to remove the pseudomembrane and the non-attached surfaces. After the area is cleansed with warm water, the superficial calculus is removed. Secondly, in the management, rinsing the mouth. The patient is asked to rinse the mouth with every two hours with warm water and maybe 3% hydrogen peroxide. Twice daily rinse with chlorhexidine 0.12 may be also effective in these cases. Antibiotics. Patients with severe acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and those who have a systemic complications like lymphadenopathy are treated with antibiotics like penicillin 215 or 500 mg 6 hourly or erythromycin 215 or 500 mg 6 hourly uh, and 4 times a day with metronidazole 400 mg each 8 hour, 3 times daily, for 7 days. These are the drugs of choice. So you either have erythromycin, metronidazole or penicillin. Another way of management throughout the treatment or management of the case is scaling performed but if the sensitivity will permit you. That's why sometimes you need a topical anesthesia, infiltration. After the disease process is diminish, diminished, complete gingival curettage and root planing should be done. Including supportive treatment, it consists of copious fluid consumption and administration of nutritional supplements. Because this uh, condition will affect the whole body. So, this is regarding the etiology, clinical feature, classification, diagnosis, and management of necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Second, we have primary herpetic gingivostomatitis or acute herpetic gingivostomatitis. This is usually the etiology of this type of disease is more frequent in infants and children younger than six years of age. 
but also may be seen in adolescents and adults. The virus which is responsible for in these cases are herpes virus or herpes simplex virus. After the primary infection, the virus ascends through the sensory or autonomic nerves and persists in the, in the neuronal ganglia that innervate the site as a latent herpes simplex virus. Second manifestation occurs as, as a result of various stimuli such as sunlight, fever, stress, etc. And these include recurrent herpes labialis, herpes genitalis, ocular herpes, and herpes encephalitis. <clears throat> so the main etiology of this, uh, of this case uh, is herpes virus, so it's, it's, it's viral infection. Clinical signs. The oral sign include the appearance of a diffuse erythematous and shiny involvement of the gingiva. The adjacent oral mucosa appear with varying degree of edema and gingival bleeding is also seen. You see it here as shiny erythematous swelling, sometimes with gingival bleeding. Initial stage is characterized by the presence of desecrated spherical gray vesicles which may appear on the gingiva, labial, and buccal mucosa, like here, for example. As you see it here, here, for example, here. And it may appear on soft palate, pharynx, sublingual mucosa, and tongue. After 24 hours, these vesicles rupture and form a painful small ulcers, which are red, elevated and hollow like margins and a depressed yellowish or grayish white central portion like that this may occur as a cluster or may be widely spread the course of the disease is limited from 7 to 10 days the diffuse gingival erythema and edema that appears early in the disease persists for several days after the ulcerative lesion has healed. There is a generalized soreness of oral cavity. There will be a difficulty in eating, in drinking even. Nothing spicy should be eaten. Nothing abrasive or hard should be eaten. The ruptured vesicle may be the focus of the pain and are sensitive to touch thermal change, juices, and condiments. In infants, this is marked by irritability and refusal to take a food. It's quite painful. While systemic signs and symptoms of the herpetic gingivostomatitis include high fever, which may reach till 105 Fahrenheit and uh, we have cervical adenitis, generalized malaise. The condition frequently occurs during or immediately after an episode of febrile disease like pneumonia, influenza, typhoid, meningitis. It's also common due to during period of anxiety, strain, exhaustion and menstruation. And also the disease is contagious. That's one of the important features of this disease. Systemic feature of this disease is contagious. So another one can take it from you. Diagnosis can be established from patient's history and clinical finding. Uh, we should take a test like viral culture, immunological tests, DNA hybridization technique, these techniques could be used for the assessment of the diagnosis. The treatment in include patient is prescribed with antibiotic for three to five days, oral rinse with antibacterial mouthwash, multivitamins with B complex supplement to a certain period of time. So these are the treatments. You know that uh, this, tree, this disease is viral and it needs time to finish its cycle. 
but there is these remedies antibiotics malforces and multivitamins so this is the the etiology clinical feature diagnosis and treatment of another acute form of gingivitis which is acute herpetic gingivitis stomatitis of viral origin the last one is pericoronitis which is another acute form of gingivitis pericoronitis it's, uh, the terms relate to the inflammation of gingiva surrounding the crown of incompletely erupted tooth this tooth may be the third molar or any other tooth which is partially erupted but it's most commonly happen in the third molar uh, in the form of acute subacute and chronic forms the clinical feature in pericoronitis include the space between the crown of the tooth and the overlying gingival flap is, is the ideal area of accumulation of food debris and bacterial growth and other one the gingival tissue is chronically inflamed and infected with various degree of ulceration along the inner surface and the bulk of the flap increased due to the influx of the inflammatory fluid cellular exudate uh, and this will interfere with the closure of the mouth during eating and may cause uh, a very severe pain during biting on a food or a subject and sometimes the flap gets traumatized by contact with the opposing jaw and thus inflammation is even more aggravated so continuous irritation and the presence of local factors local contributing factors like plugs uh, sub in this in the in this area will make it more prone to infections swelling and redness and pain so these are some of the clinical features the clinical picture also shows a marked red, marked red swollen tender supporting lesion with a radiating pain to ear floor of the mouth and the throat so the patient may also complain from pain in the ear or in the pharyngeal area or in the floor of the mouth so the pain is radiating also foul taste and inability to close the jaw is experienced swelling of cheek in the angle of the jaw and lymphadenopathy is also another clinical feature toxic symptoms like fever malaise and leukocytosis also may exist in some cases so it is a <clears throat> dangerous condition when an acute dangerous condition should be treated as soon as possible Com why because we have complications there may be an involvement of submaxillary posterior cervical deep cervical and retropharyngeal lymph nodes and there's peritonsillar abscess formation cellulitis and ludwig angina are infrequent subsequent of this condition so because it affects the the surrounding lymph nodes and the infection will drain in other, other areas it may lead to serious problems that's why it should be treated treatment of acute period of pericoronitis include first of all it depends on the severity of inflammation actually the systemic complica complication and the uh, advisability of retaining the involved tooth will determine the treatment of acute pericoronitis do you want to retain the tooth or do you want to extract the tooth do you want to remove it with the blade or you want to remove it with laser so persistent symptom persistent symptom free pericoronal flap also should be removed 
as a preventive measure against subsequent acute involvement. So the free pericoronal flap, this one, should be removed. This is one of the way of the treatment. Gently flush the area with warm water to remove the debris and exudate here. Swab the area with antiseptic after elevating the flap with a scaler. The underlying debris is removed and the area is flushed with a warm water. An anterior posterior incision, anterior posterior incision can be given in some cases with number 15 blade to release the flap. Antibiotic could be pres prescribed. After the acute symptoms, uh, when the acute symptoms are subsided, then a determination is to be taken about the tooth, either to retain it or extract it. If there is a bone loss of the second molar, then it's advisable to remove the third molar. And also, if the third molar is impacted and there is a less chance of er uh, eruption in proper position, the extraction is suggested. So, if we have a posterior bone loss here, a bone loss, sorry, here in the seven, so it's preferable because this will form sometimes because of the position of the, the third. Maybe like that, maybe horizontally like that, or semi-vertically like that. Of course, uh, it will form an area of needles of infection and it will lead to formation of bone loss and soft tissue loss here. So it's preferable to extract this. And if the tooth is non-functional, actually, it is most of it is not erupted and there is no chance to be erupted. So the extraction is preferable. <coughs> but if it's decided to retain the tooth, then the pericoronal flap is removed using knives or electrosurgery or lasers. The tissue distal to the tooth, as well as the flap on the occlusal surface, should be incised. Incising only the occlusal portion of the flap leave a deep distal pocket which causes a recurrence of acute involvement of the flap. So it's not just an incision, it's a complete removal of the pericoronal area. So incising only the occlusal portion of the flap, uh, it's unlikely to be done. After the tissue is removed, a periodontal pack is applied. Packing retained by bringing the flap forward along the facial and lingual surface to the interproximal spaces between the second and third molar. This pack is removed after one week and we, we can use the pack and we can finish the surgery without using any packs. But if you can retain the pack, it's preferable for you to use it. And this is the end of this lecture also. Uh, I hope you got benefit from it. And uh, we are about to, we are away from the finishing the subject of gingiva just after completion of three other topics, including chronic discomative gingivitis, gingival disease in child, and gingival recession. Thank you for your listening. It was my pleasure. And don't uh, forget to subscribe to the channel HL Talent to get, to get more.